<laughs> in related news, a bill you in the legislature <laughs> meant to stop working Floridians from getting higher pay or better benefits was given to lawmakers by the Florida Chamber of Commerce, a big business lobbying group that represents major employers like Publix, Bank of America, and Walt Disney World, according to emails obtained in a public records request from the investigative website Seeking Rents. The email suggests the chamber had help writing the wages and benefits bill from a billionaire-backed think tank called the Foundation for Government Accountability. That's the same organization that wrote the bill to weaken Florida's child labor laws. The wages and benefits bill is House Bill 433. It began as an attempt to stop cities and counties across Florida from passing heat protection ordinances. Those are local laws that would require employers to provide safety measures like cool drinking water and periodic breaks to roofers, farm workers, and others who work outdoors in extreme heat. But a few weeks after the bill was filed, the Republican-controlled Florida House of Representatives expanded the legislation. In addition to stopping local heat protection laws, the new version of the bill would also erase living wage ordinances that have been adopted in many of Florida's big cities and urban counties. Those ordinances typically require companies that receive local government contracts to pay their employees a few dollars more than the statewide minimum wage, which is currently $12 an hour. The cities of St. Petersburg, Orlando, and Gainesville are among the communities that have passed living wage laws for contractors. So Stanley, this gets to the point, who should control? Should local communities control their wage ordinances, uh, local wages, or should Tallahassee control local wages? It gets back to this big question about preemption of local ordinances. Two points before I answer your question. One is, I am a humanistic capitalist. And two is, is that the economic conditions vary in our state. And I think that it's, it's totally wrong for someone to consider that you can only pay X for a job when, when that job is different, has different costs related to where you live in this state. Transportation, insurance, and we can just go down a whole list. I think it's totally wrong. Hmm. And, and I think that this is another example to me of the, of the party that's supposed to be less government being more government and excuse me, the government, and I think it's totally wrong. Well, hold on, too. I, I, again, like I said, I'm, I'm a government, the governor's least, governor's best Republican, okay? I agree with you on that premise. But who's, so if we're enacting, so are you saying you're in favor of living wages? Is that, is that correct, Sam? I'm saying that living wages are different by where you live. Okay, let, I'll give you a good example, okay? Uh, when I came here 21 years ago, I decided I wanted to get in the apartment business, okay? It was too expensive for me to enter, enter into that in Hillsborough County. So I did my work in Pinellas County. Now, how did I figure that out? I looked at all the costs related. I, fig I looked at how I could rent, and then I looked at you know how much I would have to be pay on my burden. So what I'm saying is if you came out and said that you have to pay X for, for your repair person, I'm saying that that would have impeded my ability to operate well, so, in that county. So we, we agree then, right? So no, no living wage. I mean, this, this, the, the notion, I mean, look, inflation is out of control, right? I get it. No one, there's, I don't know what a living wage is. I mean, it's, how, how do you determine but, that? You know, you, you just said inflation is out of control. Let's, let's kind of, one of the problems I think is that we don't really understand how inflation occurs, okay? If you have a strong dollar, you're going to have more imports, and guess what comes along with that? Inflation. Okay, they go hand in hand. I'm not an economist, but I do know that. This question of local preemption. Right, so, right. so if 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 St. Petersburg says we want to pay government contractors, we want to make them pay their employees two dollars more, should Tallahassee say to St. Petersburg, you can't do that? Wow. With so many, I mean, Paula, with so I many, with no. so many, you, you say no. no. I say no. Yeah. No, we, you know, it used to be that my former party, the Republican Party, said that uh, local government should be making these kind of decisions. The government that that governs best is the one that's the most local. And and ever in the last decade, we just keep chipping away, chipping away, chipping away at all these local government decisions. And I think it's wrong. And I think the Republicans ought to go back to what they used to believe in, which is letting local governments decide what's best for their communities. Our legislature oversees 67 counties and all the cities and, and, and municipalities in those counties. And so I, I don't know that living wage, I mean, how, how does that, you know, how are we gonna, how are we going to work across all these jurisdictions and, and hey, can, can I how are these a, companies that are, they're statewide analogy. companies, how are they going? I'd like to give you an analogy, yeah. okay? Why should your house rules have to adapt the house rules of the Gray family? Shouldn't have to, but the government is trying to do that with us, with our communities. Yeah, it's wrong. Okay.